Fighters cut a lot of weight before fights, and it's a huge health concern in combat sports. Recently, at the time of this recording in the UFC, Colby Covington said that he dropped 18 pounds to get to 170 pounds in a day to be the backup fighter of Leon Edwards versus Kamaru Usman 3. These type of weight cuts in not only the UFC, but also boxing in most of combat sports is very, very common, if not the standard in all combat sports. Fighters will cut an insane amount of weight to meet the weight limit and rehydrate to come back 10 or even 20 pounds heavier on the day of the actual fight. Some notable examples of extreme weight cuts include Habib Nurmagomedov, when in his prime, he reportedly walked around at 100 to 185 pounds and had to cut to 155. When Conor McGregor was fighting at featherweight, he looked like a skeleton and looked absolutely depleted when he had to go on the scales for weigh-in and make 145 pounds. Max Holloway, another 145 pounder, struggled to even make 155 pounds on short notice and doctors had to stop him from cutting weight to try to fight Habib. More recently, Hamza Chemaev couldn't even make 170 pounds and missed weight by 8.5 pounds when he was supposed to fight Nate Diaz and is reportedly supposed to face somebody at 185 pounds since he now struggles to make the welterweight limit. And speaking of extreme weight loss, a little word from today's video partner. Guys, it's time to ditch your old bulky wallet and go with one of these beautiful extra wallets. This right here is the Parliament wallet in classic brown. It can hold bills. It can hold cards, as you can see here. I love doing that. And it's just perfect for slim storage and quick card access. Additionally, you can add one of these black tracker cards to help you find your wallet and other personal belongings. And you can also use the Chiplo app to make it ring and help you find it. The app also comes with a map to help you find your belongings, and as you can see, it fits snug in my wallet. Exter also sent me over their laptop sleeve, which is made of the same premium leather, and I got it in classic brown to match my wallet. It also holds my wallet, and I've been loving all the products they've sent me. So if you want any of these products and more, head over to Exter. I'll have a link in the description below. Also, you can use code TJ to get up to 25% off during their anniversary sale until April 24th. Now, these examples of extreme weight cuts happen all the time in the UFC, given that the UFC, relatively speaking, has less weight classes than most combat sports, though it is still a prevalent issue in boxing. Recently in the boxing world, Gervonta Davis has pushed for a rehydration clause that would require Ryan Garcia to not rehydrate anything above 10 pounds after weigh-ins. So obviously this begs the question, why do fighters have to cut so much weight? Why don't they just fight at their own weight? The answer is simple. I briefly mentioned it before, but the rehydration process is huge. Basically, if you can drain yourself to weigh in for one day at the given weight, on the night of the fight, you can basically come in 10, 20 pounds heavier, and obviously that size can be a huge advantage going into the fight. I really couldn't find any history on weight cutting and when it started, but it's practically been a standard for a long time in combat sports. Dustin Poirier, somebody who cuts a lot of weight to make 155 pounds and has been upwards at around 190 pounds when walking around, describes it best. Because I'd rather just <laughs> fight at my walking around weight, you know? Yeah. But if I fight at 170, these guys are 200 plus pounds. Right, that, you know? that is the problem. Basically, since everybody is doing it, if you're not cutting weight, it puts you at an immediate clear disadvantage as everybody on fight night is about 10 to 20 pounds heavier than what the fight was planned for. So that leads us into our first problem, which is cheating and the ethics of weight cutting. Size and weight matters in fighting at a high level when everybody is a professional and everybody is very, very skilled. This is precisely the reason why there are weight classes in order to force fighters to fight fighters that are of similar size and weight. However, if there are cases of extreme weight cutting and rehydration to a size much bigger than the weight limit, then that defeats the purpose entirely. Joe Rogan describes this perfectly in what he calls sanctioned cheating. Yeah. It's sanctioned cheating, Absolutely. and it's cheating at a much higher scale even yeah. than PEDs. Yeah. If you get two people, and they both weigh 135, but they're both, uh, uh, you know, they're both totally hydrated, and one of them has been doing steroids, and one of them hasn't been doing steroids, the difference will be far less than if one person weighs in at 135, but then balloons up to 160, mm -hmm, right. and then gets into that octagon at 160, but there's no PEDs involved. Well, that's a much greater advantage yeah. than well, someone who's doing some, some sort of a testosterone thing or something. This type of cheating really has fans asking the question, were you really the best fighter in that division? 
Say you fight at 155 pounds and become champion there, but you naturally weigh at around 185 pounds and you fight at around 170 to 175 pounds. Were you really the best 155 pound fighter if you were only 155 pounds for one night? This has spawned the term weight bully which is given to fighters that are way too big for their weight class, making some fans and even some fighters think that this is cheating. Though the conversation of weight bullying and extreme weight cuts is very contentious and very controversial, this next problem that stems from weight cutting is a much more serious one. Extreme weight cutting can result in very fatal health concerns. When a fighter, especially in lower weight divisions cut a drastic amount of weight, this leads to a state of extreme dehydration. Studies have shown that even when they quote unquote rehydrate, these fighters are still in a state of extreme dehydration and this causes decreases in cerebral spinal fluid secretion. Cerebral spinal fluid aka CSF is the fluid that surrounds and cushions the brain in the skull and this is obviously important for fighters as their brain has a higher likelihood to hit their skull more than the average person. So when a fighter cuts a ton of weight, there's less of this cushion between the brain and the skull, so when fighters get hit, it could be much much worse or even fatal. One study showed that the effects of concussions actually worsen because of these weight cuts and another study showed that traumatic brain injuries are more prevalent or fighters are more vulnerable to these type of injuries because of these weight cuts. In this study, they furthermore showed that lightweights in comparison to heavyweights in mixed martial arts suffer a greater volumetric decrement in the brain because of fighting in a state of dehydration. Or in other words, lighter weight classes are actually experiencing a decrease in brain volume because of weight cutting, which is extremely scary. This is why some have hypothesized that the weight cutting and dehydration is the reason why the deaths in combat sports are so prevalent in lower weight classes. And finally, the last problem I want to go over when it comes to weight cutting is eating disorders. I've actually mentioned this in a previous video on why fighters balloon to huge weights, but basically combat sports athletes have crazy eating disorders and relationships with food. A good example of this is Paddy Pimlet, who tends to eat like crazy when he's not fighting and balloon to insane weights, but it really becomes a problem when these fighters retire and they seem to balloon even past their walk around weight, and their diet and health becomes a huge problem. Boxing has a whole slew of these examples, including Prince Nassim Hamed, Marcos Maidana, and Ricky Hatton. And many viewers of the video I mentioned previously were kind enough to share their experience with eating disorders following a weight cut. What I could gather from reading all of these stories from the comments in the video and reading the stories of these professionals is this. Because of these drastic weight cuts, fighters will let themselves go and pig out on food between camps and justifiably so, since they've almost literally experienced death and was subject to eating bland food in low quantities for days on end. Though after retirement, there will be no training camps and extreme weight cutting, so when fighters do pig out on food, the effects of that food will stay. Furthermore, the quote-unquote healthy diet they were on in camp was never integrated in their lifestyle correctly and was never sustainable, so very rarely will fighters stick to a healthy diet long term. Thus, eating disorders are born and very prevalent amongst fighters. So as you can see, a lot of problems stem from weight cutting in combat sports. So is there any solution? Well, 1FC seems to be the industry leader in preventing the problems of weight cutting. Following the death of one of its fighters because of dehydration, 1FC has instituted hydration tests which essentially ban fighters from getting to health concerning levels of dehydration to cut weight. On their website, one has not only just included these hydration tests, but they also describe including multiple weigh-ins before the fight instead of just one to make sure fighters are fighting at near walk-around weight. And the reception to these moves have been very positive, and I think many fans are pushing for this type of weigh-ins in the UFC and other combat sports. So why hasn't the UFC or boxing adopted this? And the simple answer is money. Systems like these are extremely expensive. The UFC is already paying USADA millions and millions of dollars for super stringent testing and if they were to also include hydration tests and multiple weigh-ins that's possibly millions and millions of more dollars that the ufc will not spend and boxing will definitely not spend though like many of you guys i presume i hope that there is some type of preventative from the ufc and boxing for these extreme weight cuts as it seems like it's as big as a problem as performance enhancing drugs well anyways what do you guys think about weight cutting in combat sports do you like it do you hate it is it a real problem is it not please leave your thoughts in the comment section below and again thank you for all of the support peace